Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Uh, in today's uh, video, I'm starting a new chapter on my channel. I'm going to be talking about Canadian uh, immigration processes, um, how to immigrate to Canada, um, what is the process exactly, how complicated it is or how simple it is, uh, how fast is it uh, uh, to immigrate to Canada as a pharmacist or a pharmacy technician. I received tons of questions about this and I apologize I haven't replied until today. Um, I was just trying to um, gather enough information that I can actually uh, um, convey um, to you. Um, and, and it is not easy to gather that information. Um, I believe many of you who are, who are actually um, interested in immigrating to Canada, many of you have checked out so many resources on the internet and so many of them are actually um, either scammy or um, biased or not actually true or maybe old information. So it took me a little bit um, to, um, it took me a little while to actually um, gather some accurate information that I can actually uh, talk to you about. So I'll, I will have a different playlist on my channel for um, specifically for um, immigrating to Canada. I know that not a lot of uh, people are interested in that, but um, for judging by the emails and the text that I got, um, there is quite a few on my channel that are interested. So I'm going to be um, I'm going to have a playlist sp specifically for those people who are interested in immigrating to Canada. And hopefully I'll cover everything in, in, in my playlist. Uh, trust me, you do not need a um, immigration consultant. I know they, uh, they charge a lot of money. However, um, I am not an immigration consultant. So that being said, um, if you cannot follow the points that I'm going to talk to you about on my channel, I highly recommend that you hire a lawyer or an immigration consultant that are experienced um, with this process because you don't want to mess up at any of the points and I am certainly not going to take your hands and tell you what to do. Um, all I'm going to do is talk to you on my channel, uh, guide you through the process. I'll tell you everything about the process, how to go from one step to another as a, as a pharmacist mainly and also as a pharmacy technician. Uh, and it's on you. You have to go um, on the website for the, uh, for the Canadian immigration. You have to um, learn everything on your own. Um, see what I... Um, See, take the information I told you and um, see if it's actually accurate. Um, you have to do your homework, basically, in, in order to get things done. But I, like I said, I'm going to guide you uh, through the process. And starting with today's video, this is the first video in, um, in the Canadian Immigration Series. And uh, I'm going to be talking first about the... Uh, language requirements to immigrate to Canada. But before I do that, I want to give you a quick uh, information about um, the easiest way to immigrate to Canada for pharmacists and pharmacy techs. It's basically called the express entry uh, to Canada. Of course, there are many different ways to immigrate to Canada if you qualify for them. Um, and different provinces might have different programs um, that are only for that province, um, uh, but the express entry is valid for all provinces. So you can use this way to immigrate to whatever province you want to uh, immigrate to. So express entry basically provides a pathway to permanent residence for skilled workers in Canada uh, or overseas. So if you are a skilled worker, which is um, what they call our profession as pharmacists or pharmacy technicians, uh, we can apply for the express entry to come to Canada as permanent residents. Uh, and after three years of being a permanent resident, you get granted the citizenship. Uh, actually, you apply for the citizenship and you take a test and then you, you get granted the citizenship. Um, for uh, potential skilled foreign workers, um, express entry will result in fast processing times of six months or less. Now, this information could be um, a, a little bit of a BS. Um, you know what I mean. Um, yes, 
the process used to take six months, uh, maybe less. However, with the current situation and um, be going through COVID for the last two or three years, and um, the delays that uh, IRCC, which is the Immigration um, uh, Refugees uh, uh, Canada uh, Agency, has been going through, I doubt that you would be accepted within six months. However, this is the information on their official uh, website, on the Immigration uh, Canada official website. So... I, I just got the gathered the information from their website, so I, I don't know 100% if this is going to happen within six months or not, but that's what they say. Now, what is uh, express entry and how does it work? Um, basically, you first apply, create a profile, a profile on, the, uh, on the website, on the Immigration Canada website, apply for express entry. You um, get put into a pool called the express entry pool many people are applying from all over the world so let's say millions of people are applying every day i would say because i don't think it has a um, a specific day that you can apply or not apply it's not like the american uh, lottery system which only opens um in october i think no it's different in canada so you can apply anytime and then you get put into the pool and then if you're selected from that pool, uh, you receive an invitation to apply for uh, permanent residence, and then that's when you start your application for permanent residence. Um, how long does this take? Um, I have no idea. I couldn't find that information anywhere, but I mean, since you get put into the pool and then chosen by IRCC to apply, to get invited and apply, I have no idea how long this takes, but the whole process, according to IRCC, uh, takes six months or less. So what are the language uh, requirements to apply for immigration? In order to get accepted in the express entry program, you must prove your language skills. And there are two uh, different tests that you can um, go for i mean two different language that you can uh, apply for a test to get tested uh, in one is english and the other one is french of course the two official languages uh, in canada um, and the approved language tests for those two languages are either the celpip which is the canadian english language proficiency index program or ielts uh, international English language testing system those two are for English language testing and there are two other tests the TEF uh, test d'évaluation de France um, excuse my French <laughs> I don't speak French and the other one is the TCF Canada which is test de connaissance de France uh, and both those tests you can tell that uh, they test French uh, uh, abilities you don't have to take all four you need to pick one and go for that one so most people go for the IELTS exam um, it's more popular than the CELPIP and most probably if you live in another country the IELTS exam is the official English testing system in in, in your country um, so that it will be easier for you to to go for that test because you, you, you'll just test in whatever testing center you have in your country while the celpip is only offered in certain countries including canada so if you live in canada you can apply for it in canada and yes some people live in canada illegally uh, like on visit visas or whatever and they want to apply for permanent residence so that that could be a case too so you pick whatever you like you pick I cannot tell you which one of these is easier than the other. Most probably they are the same level of difficulty. So, um, and most people go for the English language test because um, the majority of people don't speak French, uh, except if you have French as your first or um, second language where you live or you studied French all your life, then you might actually want to go for French. Um, what you can do is take one English test and one French test if you actually are 
competent uh, uh, with both languages, you can take one of this and one of these and see which one you score higher uh, for. Because eventually, um, you need to score a certain number of points in order to get um, um, like higher in the hierarchy uh, and uh, easily get picked in the, in, in the immigration uh, pool, in the express entry pool. The different modules that you get tested um, on are writing, reading, listening, and speaking. And that's for any of the tests that I mentioned. Whether it's English or French, they'll test your abilities in all of these four uh, modules. Now, IRCC, or the Immigration System in Canada, uh, measures your English or French levels using two different benchmarks. Um, for English, they use the Canadian language benchmarks, benchmarks which is uh, CLB. And for French, they use something else called NCLC. So what do I mean by that? I'm going to explain in the next few slides. Um, basically, like I said before, this is an example here, how CLB uh, calculated based on my language results. Uh, we said that you're going to be tested in speaking, listening, reading, and writing, right? So let's say um, you're going to go for the IELTS test, and the IELTS test has a scoring system for each of these modules. Say for speaking, they have a scoring system between 0 and 9. 9 is the highest. You're really good. Yeah, that's, that's like your first language, English. So let's say you scored 7 on that scale. And then for the listening, you also scored 7. For the reading, you scored 7. For the writing, you scored 7. All of them have a scoring uh, scale between 0 and 9. So you did 7 in all of them. That will put you at a CLB level of 7. But if you scored 8 on all of them, you, your uh, CLB level would be 8. If you scored 9 on all of them, your CLB would be 9. Of course, it's not always the case. This is very rare to score the same score in every test. Um, and here it, it tells you how many points you get if you scored these numbers um, per ability. So if you score four sevens, you get four points for every ability. That means a total of 28 uh, points on your uh, immigration um, um, scoring uh, system or point system. And here you get five points per ability. So the higher you score, the higher the points you get for your immigration, towards your immigration. Okay, let's see another example here. This is also IELTS. Um, let's say you scored six in the speaking and six to seven, anything between six and seven for the listening, six in the reading, and six in the writing. That will put you at a CLB seven too. So that's similar to scoring four sevens. It could be confusing, but um, that's how that's how they calculate the CLB. And here you get four points per ability too. Um, and if you score down here, 6.5, 7.5, 6.5, 6.5, you still get a CLB of eight, similar to this one here. If you score to if you scored four eights and so on. You get the point now. Now, what do I need? What, what CLB do I need as a pharmacist in order to um, get accepted in the immigration uh, uh, program or the express entry uh, program? So it depends on your tier. Um, there is something called the NOC, which is the National Occupation Criteria. And um, when you look up the NOC Canada and you look up pharmacists, you'll find out that we are uh, tier one. There's tier one, there's tier two, and there's tier three. Uh, we are, uh, our profession is under tier one. And tier one, for tier one, if you're applying for the express entry, you have to score CLB seven for English uh, or NCLC 7 for French. So 7 is the minimum CLB you should get 
in order for your application to get accepted in, in, and actually picked up in the pool um, of, uh, of the express entry applicants. So if you score less than CLB7, you can say that you're not going to get up, um, accepted in the immigration. There is no way they're going to pick you up because there are millions of people who are applying with you and many of them have CLB7s or higher. So those ones are going to get picked first, of course, from the pool and you're going to remain for the last and they won't pick you because you have something that didn't meet their criteria. So CLB7 is what you should aim for. And in order to get that, you need to score these numbers here, or as I think, I, yeah, it's in, it's in the last slide here. So basically, if you want to score highest in language points, you need to score the following minimums in the IELTS uh, exam. And I'm, I keep using the IELTS as an example because that's the most popular test I would assume in any country that you live at. Uh, speaking six, listening six to seven, try aim for seven, reading six, and writing six. These are the minimum scores you should get. If you get less than that, if you get a five or a 5.5 or 5.9, no, you're not going to get accepted. You're not going to meet the CLB criteria. Okay, so uh, practice, practice, practice in order to get these numbers, of course. Um, and uh, yeah, and one more thing I want to say before I close up. Though. So maybe some of you would ask, what is tier uh, two or three? So if you look up the tier two occupations, you find that they are occupations that require a college uh, diploma or apprenticeship of two or more years. Uh, some supervisory occupations, uh, examples are computer network, web technicians, so those are tier two. Tier three is something else, so don't worry about these because you're not tier two or three, so you're not going to be um, um, chosen for a CLB5, for example. Um, if you're a pharmacist and applying as a pharmacist, then you have to aim for a CLB7 minimum. That's one thing. And the last thing I want to close up with this video is that um, in uh, the immigration um, application, if let's say you choose IELTS and if you go to apply for the IELTS exam, you'll find two different uh, IELTS exam. One of them is the general IELTS and the other one is the academic IELTS. So for the immigration system, you can go for the general IELTS. However, in the future, when you apply for the pharmacist um, um, uh, PEBC tests or to apply to take the PEBC tests, they will ask you um, to provide an IELTS results from an academic IELTS exam. Um, I don't know if things changed or not. Uh, this is the only information I could find on the internet. Um, I'm going to have to dig further about that. But that means, if that's true, that means you have to take the IELTS twice. The first time you have to do a general and the second time you have to do an academic. So uh, my advice to you is to communicate with Immigration Canada and the Board um, of Pharmacy, the PEBC, the Pharmacy Examining Board of Canada, and ask if you can do one exam that would work for both. Because that's a waste of money. Each exam costs a lot of money and also preparation. And the academic IELTS is um, much uh, more difficult than the general IELTS because it's, it tests your academic abilities. So especially in speaking, in, uh, in reading, you'll find more difficult uh, uh, um, topics that are brought up in the IELTS. So communicate with the Pharmacy Examining Board of Canada, email them and email the IRCC people and see what would they tell you. If there is no way around it, then unfortunately you're gonna have to do the IELTS exam twice different times of course but uh, you need to at least um, psychologically prepare for that because it's two different exams um, that's all I have for today I hope this information helped a few of you there will be many many videos about immigration process just um, make sure to subscribe to the channel and activate the bell so that you get notified of my future videos uh, I'm sure um, the videos will help 
you with the with the process and understand the process more and more because it is very complicated um and i know i know it is complicated you guys told me and i i really know it's complicated so hopefully we'll work it up uh, together and if you have any questions uh, let me know in the comments thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video